Hi, my name is Corey Stegerard Pace, and I'm part of the AI Cloud Advocacy team here at Microsoft. And I have the honor of delivering to you a lesson number 11 uh, called Function Calling and working with external applications of our Generative AI for Beginners course. In the introduction of this course and what we will cover today is really one explaining what function calling is and also understanding when we should be using that in our applications how to use function calling specifically with, with using the Azure OpenAI service, and lastly, how to integrate a function call into your applications. The learning goals for today, after you complete this lesson, you should have a better understanding of the purpose of function calling, how to actually set up a function call, and then lastly, and most importantly, how to actually design an effective function call so that you have a successful function call within your application. First, we're going to explain a, a bit of a scenario or what we're actually building here in this course, as well as in this specific lesson. In this case, we're going to look at uh, when a user would come in and let's say they want to maybe request uh, that they want to get some courses to learn about micro different various different Microsoft products. In the case, the user would make a request directly to a large language model, let's say in this case, uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo. And in the case that we will want the large language model to be able to call a function, uh, in this case, get courses, that would actually make an API call to the Microsoft Learn Catalog API to get courses that are, would be relevant for the user. And then lastly in the flow, uh, present those options to the user. So that's what we're gonna be building towards in today's lesson. But before we even do that, we need to answer the question of why function calling in the first place. Why is it important and why would you want to use it? Well, one of the increasing importance of building applications with large language models is in fact that uh, you know, what many have start with chat applications, whether working directly with the model or making requests directly to the model, we're seeing more and more that applications need to have a precise formatting in terms of responses from the model when they want to actually integrate this into other flows or in parts of the application, and that be the, the application itself. Uh, and this is what you know function calling really addresses. So if we look at this uh, two descriptions here, we have two descriptions of students, Emily Johnson and Michael Lee. We have very similar descriptions in terms of what their GPA is, their skills, um, and you know extracurriculars in terms of what they've been doing and where they want to go in their lives, essentially. Now we're going to take two of the same prompts. Uh, in this case, we're going to say we want to extract all the information that's important, so their name, their major, the school, the grades, and the clubs that they've been involved in. So these are the same prompts, and we've requested the model to actually send this into a JSON object, because maybe we want to use that format later on, uh, maybe you to store that information into our database, or maybe make us some sort of API request with that information. What happens is if we even run these two prompts, what you will see is we might actually get different formatting in the responses that could cause errors in our application unless we check them uh, and maybe add any additional features. So in this case, we have uh, the name, which is about the same, the major, which is computer science, the same, school, which is in the, also in the same format. But then if you notice here at grades, in one we have a 3.7, and in the other with Michael Lee, we have a 3.8 GPA, GPA. So both strings, but they obviously contain different information that could cause issues in our application later on. So what do we want when we're talking about function calling? It is really to address these concerns in a way so that we can make sure that the formats that we receive are in a good way that we can actually call a function later on in our application and that function runs successfully. So what are the, actually the use cases for function calling? Well, like I said earlier, the one is easy if we want to call any external tools, whether that be tools that our application is using or even what our users are using. Uh, and we want to have make sure that the format that these tools expect are the ones that we deliver. We also might want to even create API calls or database queries. So in the case of our uh, use case that we're building towards, we also we will be making an API call and we want to make sure that we have the right parameters to make that call successful, whether that be the required parameters or even optional ones. And then lastly, if you just want to work with some sort of structured data, uh, working with function calling uh, is another good way to do that, whether we want to use that structured data to display it to the user in a different format um, that may be not, not coming directly from the large language model. So now that we kind of understand the use case, let's actually get started on creating our first function call.
So the first thing we'll do is actually create a message. And in this case, it's a very standard format in terms of um, the messages that we would develop with using a GPT 3.5. And in this case, we have a user that comes in and the content we're sending, and they just want to find a good course for a beginner student to learn Azure. So that's the message that we're initially setting. Then we also need to sort of define the functions. Uh, first thing we do is define the name of that function. And we give it a general description that is also very helpful for the large language model to identify if that function is relevant. And then lastly is the parameters. In this case, we are going to assign an object and make it have three different properties. Uh, one is the role, which also has a description. So this is uh, the role of the learner, uh, the product. Uh, and this is, has a description of what the product's actually being covered here, whether it's Azure, Power BI, or any sort of maybe Microsoft tools that are in the Microsoft Learn catalog. And then lastly is the level. This is the skill level of the, or level experience of the learner. So this gives a lot of information to the large language model to understand that these are the criteria or the necessary parameters that's needed for this function to operate. And then lastly, we even have a required field that we can set here. So at, le at the very least, a large language model needs to be able to determine that there's a role that's been sent to the, or determined, or sent by the user in their chat message in order for this to function to operate. Then we're actually going to make the function call. So in this case, we're going to choose the model that we've deployed, uh, all of the messages that we've completed in the cases of, of the user message of the system message. We're also going to include the functions that we have done. So this is the functions equal functions. And then lastly, we have this function called auto. And auto means that the, the large language model has the ability to decide whether or not uh, the function is uh, appropriate for this particular instance or this chat message. Then next, we'll actually see what the function call that the, the model has determined. In this case, if you remember our earlier message, the student had determined that they were a beginner and they were looking to learn Azure. So just kind of looking at what the model has interpreted here is that the role is student, uh, the product that is relevant for this user is Azure, and then lastly, it's a beginner. Now we're actually going to integrate this into our application by importing requests because we want to make an API request and also the parameters, which is the role, product, and level that this API requires uh, in order to get some information. And then lastly, we're going to take that URL, all those parameters, and append it to the URL to get the results. Then we're going to integrate that into an application by doing the function to call and the, the available functions, which is the function name that we will have. And then we're going to also load that into JSON uh, so that we, we will handle the responses within the arguments that we get from the function. Then, most importantly, after we get those responses, we want to make sure that the model has have a, an ability to include that into their messages. So we want to then append those message, that message uh, and give that into the model so that when it, it goes in to make the last week the output, that this is what the model will receive. So this is kind of ending the flow, is that now the assistant has uh, the role of and the content where they say that find some good courses for beginner students, is presenting the URLs uh, that has been retrieved from the function that was calling the API from Microsoft Learn Catalog. And then it also even encourages the user to click on those links if they want to have access to the course. So that was a bit of brief about how function calling works. To get the complete uh, code example, please check out the GitHub repo at the aka.ms slash genai beginners that you see here, as well as the full course uh, where we had explain not only how to use function calling, but all things, also things like AI agents, which are very much relevant in this case. Thank you and good luck.